All right, it's episode 211. Welcome back. We are back from the holidays. And if you saw that awesome coming soon intro, that was a uh, Jesse, great job. Sweet. Yeah, Smooth. I didn't even want the Thanks. show to start. That's why wow. we're late because we've been listening to this for 10 minutes. <laughs> so just that that beat there. So welcome back, everyone. What's up, guys? I feel like I haven't seen you in so long. I really, really have not been but... here in forever. Oh, <laughs> that's true. I think I, yeah, I missed some shows. And it's, yeah, but... 2023 was not the year for Matt to be on the show. No, I think <laughs> I had I think I had more unexcused absences than yeah. I did. You're uh, gonna go to truancy before. court. That's right? probably true. yeah. We need to get your mom's information. <laughs> Uh, turning it around first yeah. show of the year that's right <laughs> 10 days in so yeah. um look we're going to break down this another nar scandal um the president the one that's only been there for four months interim. well she wasn't i think she was not I interim. She was the no, real she really I, she I guess the i just mean like a de facto interim now that you left sure yeah, yeah. now kev's coming in yeah <laughs> jeff <laughs> jeff the nar president but um after four months she was resigning because um she was a victim of blackmail nar is having a very cowboys circa 1996 chapter it really in, is in they are running history. through head coaches we just got rid of chan <laughs> gailey <laughs> now, yeah. that's a, now we're on to campo or whoever the fuck came after that yeah i mean look i mean they thought New Year knew them, and uh, it seems like 2023 is still following. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, look, we're going to break this down a little bit and, and see um, if we could get to the bottom of it, because that's, that's what the only real estate podcast yeah. show is really going to do. Investigative reporting. Yes, we have all the uh, behind-the-scenes facts. Yeah. Very yeah. well connected. Yeah. 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 From and news articles. Do we think this is going to impact our dues? I mean, at some point, at some point, they're going to start like defending themselves in more lawsuits, right? Well, so that, like, but I don't think it should affect the dues because she didn't pay the blackmail. She stepped down. Well, do so, you, you know, that's they weird. Gotta, too. They don't got to refill the reserves. Yeah. With, <laughs> with all the CEO presidents that NARS had in the last 12 months. Yeah. Th yeah. The last six months. Last six, six months, months. Do they all get golden parachutes? I can't imagine so. I mean, like, like, the, like at the end of the day, these are still brokers and agents yeah. and things like that. No, no they I get mean, paid. Oh, I, I, I they know, do, I'm, but I'm sure they get paid. It's, you know, it's supposed to be a not-for-profit. Is there any regulations around how big a golden parachute you can give somebody at a non-profit? There sure shit should be if you're out in four months. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, I and mean, should that should that really be a non-profit? There's a much deeper rabbit hole to dive <laughs> yeah. down there around. You know, uh, you do this for me. Let's just have some fun. Uh, what is the? Uh, I don't think it's a CEO because it's a nonprofit. What What's the um, the breast cancer uh, nonprofit? Oh, uh, Susan B. Komen. Susan B. Komen. Yeah, I was They're, gonna say Anthony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, sa just do salary, <laughs> like top salary or something. It's um, it's pretty. It's pretty. They don't make a lot. No, that's glass yeah, door. Sure. No, yeah. that's glass door. That's no. not do like. Yeah, the people in Glassdoor CEO definitely or leave, they don't leave the uh, top salary re reviews. Oh, go go! <laughs> Did you see this? Is how the, the bottom question there says, "How much does the CEO of breast cancer make?" <laughs> so, I bet you if you click on that, it will give you the probably answer. Will uh, okay. executives make a hundred and twenty? Okay, that's okay. Seven hundred and twenty a year. Okay, uh, executive. Make, okay, so almost a million. Okay, I thought it would be way more. Because the old uh, NAR uh, uh, CEO made four million, right? Did yeah. we look that up, Bob? Yeah, yeah, and but I think the, the CEO versus like the presidents that we're talking about, yeah, right? like I don't, I, I'm sure they obviously they make something. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I don't know if usually your golden parachute is like in relation to how much you make. Like those guys on Wall Street give massive golden parachutes, but yeah. they also make like 30, 40 million a year. Here's the here's the real concern, though. Right. Like obviously, as real estate agents and from a public perception, we're we're on the forefront more than ever right now with with the commission lawsuits. And now you've got, you know, the previous guy getting sexually harassed out of office. Now you've got this this lady who well, did, some was he sexually harassed out of office. Well, did no, he, he did the harassing, he did the, he did yeah. the harassing yes. and got himself out of office. Yeah. Yes, that's what yeah. I'm saying is I should have said he sexually harassed himself out of the office. Yeah. But now she's got this non-financial matter, personal non-financial matter that she said she that she was resigning over over the blackmail thing. And then the CEO stepping down. Like it's kind of as a real estate agent, it's you kind of get concerned about whether the right people have your back and if they're paying attention to the stuff that's ultimately going to affect you. 
as opposed to everybody just CYA constantly because it's a shit show over there. So this is today's article on Inman. Real Realtors fear damage to NAR brand beyond repair following Casper's exit. I mean, I don't think that's ever possible because <laughs> I mean, we live in a world where people get over stuff and they throw these things on the back burner so quick. I think the commission thing makes realtors look more like hacks than anything else. First off, I don't think her leaving damages the NAR brand no. from a perception of yeah. of what consumers think. I don't right? want to get... Yes, you're, you're not wrong. But you just since you're you're focusing on her for a second, I don't want to get too well, far. this is about her. I know. I, just, I don't want to get too far into this podcast without acknowledging like... This is a horrific thing to do to a human being. So we're going to have fun on this show like yep. we always do. But fuck people who do stuff like this. This is such a horrible thing to do to another human being. I have no idea what she was blackmailed over. But the fact that somebody who likely had no skin in the game whatsoever to do that to a human being to try to extort money out of them. I hope whoever did that gets their fucking day in front of the judge like existentially, not even legally, because that type of shit grinds my gears in a way that is just fucking like unimaginable yeah this isn't her look it's not her fault compared to the last it's guy probably, but hang, dumb but hang on, hang on though we right don't on. know though like here's the yeah. thing is like this is salacious in nature this could be it, it says it's not financial it doesn't mean that she didn't that she's not on the hook for so, any, any litany of guesses it, here's the, the thing the person blackmailing still sucks i'm with you on that yeah but i don't think she's just like a saint because because the article we that we read and one of the things i think is the funniest is that, that cnn article where she says that she talked to the cops and she told them and then she told NAR that she was stepping down. But in the article, it also says that she said she wasn't going to give in. And I'm like, I mean, you didn't give in in the sense that you went to the cops and those things. But you resigned the position. Yes. And you're not wrong. That that was a little bit of a flip flop. That was interesting. But I guess the, the thing to point out there that I'm trying to hone on in on is like, this is playing to me like something that you just wouldn't want people to know about because it's fundamentally embarrassing. Because if it was something that you did that was horrible and illegal and you told the police, yes, then you would probably be in a lot more That's trouble. So thing. my my gut says this was nothing that hurt other humans. It was probably just very embarrassing. Yes. And that's the type of shit. Because if the other because if it was something that really should have been exposed why blackmail her why not just say it well and, and, and you know what i mean you're, you're to your point of her going to the cops like obviously she went and kind of told on herself in some kind of way and you're absolutely right like i'm just saying like i don't it's it's there was a there was a third choice which was stay in your job and just let it come out and right. deal and weather the storm right which again i'm i'm not gonna sit here and be hypocritical to say that because i got shit in my background i'd be like, probably prefer people not know sure that i would walk away from stuff too i just don't think it's automatic that she didn't she may have done something that a lot of people would consider reprehensible that's fair potentially yeah. maybe and and hopefully just in an embarrassing way but yeah anyway, it's full on gossip. i just don't want right to i don't want it to feel like we're dogpiling on her in this no. show this is more about the whole situation and the fact that this it's just a train ride of nonsense at NAR. Well, yeah. <laughs> again, we've talked about this in the past. Regardless of this, regardless of the last guy that was totally in the wrong. That yes. guy. Yeah, no, 100%. And then, of course, the lawsuit. Bob, the the, the one even the previously before that, yeah. before that who early retired. Like There's a reason why he Relatively early retired. Relatively suddenly. Yes. And the fact is, even before all that, we've, we've been pretty critical on the show to say, like, look, we who have been realtors for a long time, still have not felt the uh, value 100%, right? We've always questioned value of the NAR membership here. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty uh, safe to say that out of the three of us that we're all on the same page with that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, um, you know, to, to, to sit here and say, yes, this person sucks for her. That's awful. Like no one should be extorted. She's, right. she's, it could be in fact that who knows this could still come out because obviously she this is out here that she That's was being thing, blackmailed still tends to come out yeah yeah in this day and age. like now because of it now the person's just mad they're not going to get their money there's gonna be like you know what whatever exactly you know? um and so like in the inman article and in, in, you know she alleged she was leaving her post under the threat of extortion um you know she'd had recently received this threat to disclose a past personal non-financial matter unless uh, she compromised her position at nar um, which, you know, NAR said she refused to do. So like you said, Matt, she still compromised her position. Yeah, yeah she right, refused yeah. to for like a minute. Yeah, which, which is first, like, like the only people who suffer in that is her and her immediate surrounding sure. people. I, I definitely don't. You're right. Like, as I've sit over here and think about this, I, I kind of looked at this as it could have been something bad. But you're right. She, with her going to the police, she she did not deserve that. And it does suck for her circle. 
but at yeah. the end of the at the end of the day, it, it shouldn't. I, I I don't know if you walk away from something like that. And yeah. and I will say, like, look, to is it going to get to the point where all right, you've had so much instability that the next person in line is prob, you know, are we going to start losing talented potential? Because people. nobody wants the yeah. job. Yeah, because no one wants that yeah, job, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially taking that job knowing that the lawsuit fight is coming. Yep. Yeah, like I question anybody who's like, all right, I'm ready to I'm ready to step up in this line of fire. Yeah. It's just um, kind of like being, you know, the actual president. Like, would you want that job that today? I mean, with all the insider trading and how much money they make, probably. <laughs> That's maybe the only upside. <laughs> you can Other charge than that, two million for have, speaking. Have you experience. seen yeah. how much mo- their net worth and money they make yeah, while, while in, office? in office? And then beyond, that's the only upside because that job seems like a beating right now. Nobody's nobody's truly uh, reaching out to the NAR president to 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 do that, though. I don't think. But you're not wrong. Like their their bench is only so deep. Like they're on like the fifth deep guy now to run this thing. And you, you said some before, like the headline was like, does the do the agent suffer because of the brand? I, I would venture to guess that if you go on an appointment today, most people aren't even going to know about this. They don't care, uh, which is uh, also but, just in, 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 in this article. Like, that's a great point you bring up, because, again, if we how many how many agents are five years or newer in the business? A the, lot. Majority. The, majority. the majority. Majority. OK. Do you believe because again, we're in the non-majority. We're ten years mm-hmm. and longer. We still don't know what NAR does all the way. Those no. new ones definitely don't know anything. No. They just know they have to join. They have to pay their dues. They just paid them. It was painful for them. A lot of them who weren't selling any houses. I just saw uh, an article come out that you know is like forty, almost fifty percent now have done either zero or one mm-hmm. transaction in the last twelve months. Yeah, I was like, uh... um, so they're. They're not paying their dues, yeah, right. So they 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 don't know the value of that. And and in the Inman article, one one person was said, you know, he's been part of NAR for like, I'm going to paraphrase this because I don't want to go all the way back up. No, 50 years. He's been part of the Realtor Association for 50 years. He's like, he still wears his Realtor lapel pin yeah. with pride. Now he's starting to question it. Well, and here's the other thing, too. I was in, and, and I will freely admit, I don't really know, but I did think part of what NAR was designed to do because it's such a huge, I just made up right, but it's such a huge lobby. They have so much influence. Their job was to kind of protect real estate agents from things like massive commission lawsuits, yeah. right? Like, yes. like yes. no, like no offense, but like I thought the one thing we paid for was kind of some assurance that. Those monies were uh, going to the proper people to make sure. And I'm not saying the, the commission lawsuits, a good thing, a bad thing, a right thing, a wrong thing. I'm just saying, like, if you're not protecting real estate agents, I don't I really don't understand your value now. It does seem like their metal was tested last yeah. year and, and they you would one. expect them to at least put up a little bit of a better fight. So I think it's like lawsuits and the discount you get at office office max are like the big things. Well, and they <laughs> sure as hell don't keep me from being didn't... spammed about health insurance. No, yes. they don't. I can tell you that. Yeah, no, they don't. I... <laughs> I mean, can we? I want to hire those people. Those people are relentless. They are yeah. relentless. Those yeah. are the ADT people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nick, you guys say something. Cameras on you. I just is it. Me. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I mean, <laughs> I don't have anything other than yes. Oh, now you yeah. put it on me on that. Now I have nothing yeah. to say. Like Jesse's when, back. Yeah. But it's just like name a color and your mind goes blank. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. But look, in the grand scheme of things, all right. You know, we're 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 ten days into twenty twenty four. We're still having the same conversation. We're gonna have a. I don't know who the new interim president is because I haven't read that far in yet. His name is Kevin Sears. I read it right before. Oh, you did this. actually. You did tell but us because we is said, he of the Chicago Sears. Yeah, that's what yes, Ryan has. Yes, Chicago Sears is um, no. He has a. He's a. He's a broker at a uh, Sears Realty in Massachusetts. I read okay. that also. Okay. Here's the thing, though, right, is like um, and I, I do not mean this negatively. I'm going to say that at the beginning and the end of this statement. But is is the NAR thing kind of similar to like being involved in your own office or broker politics? Right. It, it's it's not usually the people who are the closest to the market. Right. It's it's definitely people who are a mixture of talented and free of time. Yeah. Right. So it's usually not the heaviest producers out there because they're in production, running huge teams, things like that. Not saying there's no team members on in, 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 in brokerage politics, but is NAR kind of the same way? Is it, is it even is it does it sometimes fall to agents who aren't as in touch with the market because they're not living it day to day just because how could they be? I've always and do the job. Said, I've always said that anybody that's, you know, and, and that's something that you see who even volunteers at a local level. 
and then moves up because th- those aren't yeah. paid positions. No, I don't think so. No, at they're a local not. level. No, at a local they're level, definitely not. I know, and we we know people that have served. Yeah, yeah. Not paid. and at a national level, I think up to a certain point, they're not paid. Yeah, you probably got to get pretty. I, I think you up. get paid for. I think you get reimbursed for travel. Mm-hmm. From what I remember asking on because I, I i still always ask wh- wh- why do it and, and and their response is they want look they want to better the industry and yeah. and i look i'm not going to great for them yeah. yeah but if it's taken away from their businesses and and they're still facing this at some point when do we need to change yeah you know when do we need to change that you know it's a 1.56 million person lobbyist group and right now we're not we're not effectively lobbying in my opinion we kind of lost, like I wouldn't say lost, but you know, the one sort of inflection point in all of this was last year, and it didn't necessarily go the way that NAR wanted it to, and it doesn't sound like they really put up the unless uh, we win the uh, appeal. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, that's a big. Uh, that's a good point, and this is kind of the issue with having so much turnover at NAR right now. Is like this thing isn't over. Yeah, how do you focus on it, the right stuff yeah, when right. you're just constantly churning the people at the top? It's leadership is yes it is going to be an interesting road ahead for all of that and how it plays out regardless though i i don't know that a uh you know a maybe a council or something like that of 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 like individually elected people from the realtors themselves would do any worse or better or whatever um but NAR has kind of gone the way of a lot of political organizations and it hasn't necessarily been for the best lately. And I, look, I, I see people on in the Facebook groups. They're like, you know, stop worrying about this. Get back to selling. And look, I understand that. And, yeah. and we're probably in that same category mm-hmm. camp. But I will say, like, again, at, at some point, perception starts to truly become reality. Right. This, and yeah. and for the longest time as a real estate professional or realtor, did I say it right this time? Real tour, real tour. Yeah, um, as a real tour, that you know, we kind of it was kind of the running joke. Like, yeah, that's always come up, but everything's status quo. It's never going to change. Whatever, you know, because we do have some good lobbyists yeah. within the you know the local governments and and federally and everything else like that. But now, you know, I will tell you that I had more non real estate people start sending me messages about the commission lawsuits. Mm-hmm. And they were asking, how does this impact yeah. you? And now you've got this. They probably won't ask too many questions, but it just continues to always be that that black eye. Yep. That is exactly what I would like. It's when you throw out a number of one point seven eight billion dollars, it's just super catchy. And people are already interested in real estate. That's why there's a million channels and all these shows. And, you know, like, so they're, they're, they're already somewhat interested in it. And then you throw out huge numbers and then you throw out a sexual harassment case. And then you throw about somebody, re, you know, resigning under the threat of blackmail under this mysterious cloud. And it starts becoming like, is real estate the soap opera we're not watching? And and, and look, I am all about transparency. And I, I, I want all the eyes on real estate. One, it'll help us actually put a good message out there as opposed to allowing those agents who are doing zero and one deal to be the ones who are influencing people's perceptions of real estate agents. So I welcome the transparency. I think it's just people aren't coming in wondering what's up with real estate. They're coming in being like, dude, real estate agents are freaking like scumbags. Look at what's going on out well, there. They already feel that way. Like That's uh, what I'm saying. Before the show, I was on the phone with Corey Mills and you know he's he's you know he'd been pushing out a lot of youtube content and he shared yesterday one of his posts you know one of the screenshots that said you know you know all realtors are scammers yeah. or fuck yeah you know, whatever it was and i mean we already have that so, i mean go post on TikTok, go post on on instagram or whatever and you'll have you'll have these people say like you're not you know you you know, basically i remember one letter that you know, my brother and I got back in the day and said, you should go back in time and kill your family so that you were never born. <laughs> right. Jeez. And I'm like, that it's was out of ridiculous. hate for real estate agents. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm like, that's a whole different level of hatred for an agent. And here's the thing is, I'll, seen. I'll take that guy and toss him off to the side along with like, like the people who just overly love every real estate agent they know. And even the terrible yeah, ones. Right. right. The problem is it's it's the three and four star reviews that we're losing right now, right? The people who are on the fence about like 
the their ability to trust real estate agents and things like that. I, again, I don't think they're sitting there paying attention to this stuff, but I had the commission lawsuit has came up in living rooms more than once. People are paying attention. Yeah. Like, they absolutely know that. I, and I will say like, even at our local levels, you know, with all this kind of commission talk, this is a little kind of, you know, kind of rant I have, a problem that I have is like some of these local level realtor MLSs and, and even associations are still doubling down on on commissions to the point I'm like, are we really having this talk right now with everything going on? I think we should loosen some of these standards. Let's see what happens. And we're still, you know, we're still kind of have this old guard mentality and and we don't want change change coming whether we like it or not yeah. it, it's almost like it's almost like the realtor association is a small town that's experienced rapid development and you go to this the zoning and planning committee and, and all the people are showing up because there's a new developer in town where they're like we don't want this development happening because we don't want city life coming out our way this is why we moved here and it's like it doesn't matter. It's coming whether you like it or not. That's like standing on a train tracks and trying to stop a moving train. Yeah. It's not going to happen. And and we've got a lot of change that we need to figure out. How do we evolve as a 116 year old you know nonprofit organization that we we start working with modern times to still show that as a real estate professional, there's still a lot of value in what we do, yeah. right? And and I was having a conversation with. Um, yesterday with Nick Krim um, on the show, really big into AI. And one of the conversations that that came up, you know, because the Krim runs the uh, certified uh, AI certified agent, right? So these these really mastered artificial intelligence to really help real estate agents kind of package together to to use within their business so that they can start leveraging out their time and and um, you know just be the real estate professional that everyone wants. And one of the conversations that that he had heard is between Elon Musk and someone else is about uh, team human or team AI. And, and team human is is humans using AI to enhance their lives. Then you've got team AI, which is, you know, using AI to replace humans and everything that they do. Right. And so it's like, how do we find and marry this you know, this together? And, you know, from a from an organizational state. All right, we've got a 116 year old, you know, lobbyist group here, you know, a trade association that we've got a lot of growing up that we need to do. We made a lot of bad decisions. We don't even own realtor.com. <laughs> that that was crazy. freaking that was a piss poor decision. Right. We try to hoard our data and, and be really private with it. But then we let other companies come in and buy it and then they give it out. And now we don't even own it anymore. Like. We've made some really, really bad internal decisions. And so how do we get, how do we come and, and really modernize our trade association to keep up with the times and to show our value so that, um, that we continue to move forward at, at another 116 years? I don't know who Facebook user is. I'm so sorry that you're so wrong about that, though. I'm sure you're somebody that I like on the other side. So, so you can't. You. So this one says you can't replace humans because you you can't because you can't program human rational decision making into AI. And one of the conversations I was with with Nick Krim and and somebody else who brought this up is like, look at look at Amazon, right? Amazon has pretty much robots running their whole entire warehouses, right? That's not replacing human decisions. But you go online, and let's say that you order something, Brian, and it's wrong. And you want to go and, and change that. Well, normally that would have been a human kind of customer service rep. Now in three minutes, AI will have a seamless conversation with you and, and get that yeah. replaced. That's and, just yeah. the start, right? AI rationale is better than human decision making. 100, because Humans it doesn't are make- incredibly fallible. That's why they kill each other in the millions every single year. We have, you, you want to talk about human rationale? Have you ever heard a customer conversation, a customer service conversation between two human beings? It's almost irre have you ever heard a conversation between anyone and the manager? Have you ever heard me and it's, Brian having a conversation on yes. certain certain days? <laughs> human beings have incredibly <laughs> fallible rationale. AI could easily replace it. One hundred percent. And if it does make mistake mistakes, it corrects it and doesn't make it again. Mistakes are also. It relative. also doesn't get emotional and slow well. down when yeah. correcting the mistake either. Correct. It doesn't get defensive in yes. your critique of yeah. it making a mistake, right? right. Like, yeah. and and not make this an AI. This is not an AI show today. But but to say like, all right, 
we've adopted and as agents we're adopting in trying to modernize ourselves with the technology to make you know to still keep us relevant at the same time we're also training stuff that could try to replace us or at least diminish us enough to to lower compensation and so from a trade organization how do we modernize our times so that again we stay relevant mm -hmm. and 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 you know is that part of that is is that having good pr campaigns to to consumers direct to consumers and making sure that we actually are you know supporting maybe the right politicians i agree right I agree there's a book called 21 lessons for the 21st century by yuval noah harari um yeah yuval noah harari he was the guy who wrote sapiens and homo day it's a very interesting book on this exact topic right now um that's why i brought it up no, I, can't I read that book stop responding to these comments i wish i knew who i was talking to i'm sorry that this silly thing isn't doesn't it just says that you're a facebook user so um i'd love to have a conversation deeper conversation about this but just really quick uh empathy is not rational and it 100 can place uh, replace ethics because we think that we have free will and a soul and that's where our decision making comes from that's not true it's we're just algorithms every decision that we make is just a pattern of other decisions and other data that we have, have gathered in the past unconsciously and even our genetics make decisions for us right like we don't come out of the womb consciously smiling when we're happy we do it because it's been genetically embedded in us to do so for centuries and centuries and generations and generations but that's not a decision that we make that's just embedded in our dna and, and so is most of our decision making it is simply just algorithmic patternistic we think that we have free will but the way that we think about things is not really our choice and so you could easily program ai to be more efficient than us one and, and my thought process is like how do we i mean this is a whole different show maybe it's not i even think we kind of beat think, the blackmail thing to death did we? No, not to death, but I think we covered it thoroughly. Yeah. So this is more fun. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, and I agree. Like uh, again, it's still it's still on uh, on par. Again, I just I just want to figure out how do we modernize it. And that's something that we've been having this conversation a lot longer than just the last 12 months. It's right? it's, it's, it's here's the thing with the NAR that we have to understand. It's similar to the NFL. Most players' careers are not long enough for them to think about the greater good, mm -hmm. right? They're out of the league in three years. They're only getting one contract, right? I got to make my hay while the sun shining type of thing. And, and and I think NAR suffers from a little bit of that. Not at the top, but you have you, your bottom churns so much. And and even tenured agents will leave the industry. So that's good and bad, though. It, it right? is good because and bad. If it you should have, keep things fresh. It keeps things fresh. And at the same time, they have no basis sure. to, to say, well, this is how it used to be. Like, I remember that's where NAR not showing value is the problem. Correct. Right. Because they could start showing like, Again, you know, when you go through your local trade, uh, your local MLS and um, organization and, and realtor association, you have to take a mandatory MLS training, right? And there's certain mandatory things, but there's nothing about other than actually, is there anything, any, any mandatory training for NAR that no, I can recall? There's mandatory payments. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is there anything that um, says, hey, you'd be like to join NAR? You what? just have to go to that orientation when you first, it's like a six hour orientation thing when you first get licensed member. Don't you have to do that? I remember they used to send, like a, a, there's definitely, they used to definitely to, MLS like training. That's yeah, about that's all that MLS training. But they used to send like a they physical card. They give you the card. pin at the end. I physically got handed a pin by a lady. I, I thought it was an orient. I have no talking. recollection oh, I of the question. I don't either because I don't. It's been a long time. Yeah. Mine, mine was 2006. Yeah. Um, but which is different. I passed then. my test 11 years ago today. Today. Ooh. Yeah. I remember you saying Facebook that. reminded me. Yeah. And, and, you know, I do remember like when you join, you used to get this like, I think a little welcome packet. And it was, you had the realtor card. Yeah. And then it also highlighted, which I thought was cool back then. This was something that I did really think was cool. And then, then they kind of, you know, shit the bed on this one, in my opinion, is that we, we used to have, um, didn't we have deals set up with like Home Depot or Lowe's? There was like discount things. You could offer, like, a... like, and I would offer to my clients, like when you yeah. purchase them, you'll get a something through, I can't remember, was it a discount at, at one of those? Yeah. Um, and then I remember you could get all these discounts, you know, because they, that's what they negotiated, mm -hmm. which I think they still offer. You still just, do. I still get like, you get, when we were doing, I was paying for my own direct mail. I do it by hand. You get mad discounts at office max. Oh really? Yeah. See, no yeah, one talks about a, that at a high level. Cause not a lot of people use them because they don't really run their business like a business. That's, that's, yeah. that's how, that's the churn at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, is, is there car insurance discounts? Is there, I don't I, know. That's a good, I mean, 
There's clearly health insurance discounts. If you have a phone, you would know that. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, up. but I don't think that's real. You don't I don't think that's now. true. I think they just pull oh. that information and say they're part of like the NAR, or whatever. Oh. Which NAR like, can't have that many different partner companies. That would yeah, be just right. chaotic. Or maybe they do. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. I, I guarantee you, yeah, it's right. not like you know, it's not coming from. It's NAR. like the ADT thing. Yeah, yes. they're just they're just pulling yeah. information. So because the way I look at it is like I remember back in the day, like when Costco, when when you first joined Costco, you would get this, you know, the the giant warehouse to buy all these goods. Mm -hmm. I remember they had like a travel agent inside of it. You they had like you could buy a car at at fixed oh rate we pricing. could do that for a while. Yeah, yeah. I remember that program. Like you could buy a car at Costco, and and it, it was no haggle, but it was a lower price. Um, there was a like, and at one point they were talking about maybe buy you could buy real estate i think i think that came up through that really one time. it's almost like when you're on vacation and you're like you're at a beach spot and you walk by the real estate place and they've just got pictures of houses and that's how yeah. costco would do it yeah. they just have like a board <laughs> exactly. there's some costco houses but like costco <laughs> did a good job with like kind of showing that Again, yeah i know nothing other than actually there's a nar travel club yeah, here's that this is what I'm serious. i know this stuff exists because somebody told me and i i understand that's just how these these kind of things that we do exist but again I, I don't know enough of it. It's not in my face. Like they're giving away like, cruises. Uh, they don't do a I good know. job of promoting this to their members. No. Can you get in the airport lounges or anything? No, no, NAR just, airport lounge. That'd be cool. Yeah. That would be nice. <laughs> I mean, do they let you do they let you buy day passes to go to in, into those places anymore? Oh, anymore. Uh, yeah. They used to. I know to. they used some, to. Some still do. I know they like, used to. Cent uh, I tried to the, the Delta Sky. Centurion miles. Lounge, you, you can't get a day pass anymore. No. Unless, well, like unless dollars, I thought I was just always so guessing with you guys. Even for for members, it's fifty thousand. You got to spend on your card per year uh, to bring a guest in. Now, otherwise, it's fifty bucks. Yeah, but I'm saying like you ha you still have to be a member. Yeah. Like like the Admirals Club. I don't think you even needed to used to be a member. You could just buy a day pass, even if you weren't. I think. Um, yeah, maybe that so. status. Yeah, I don't know if they do that. No, anymore. they they made it. A lot Jesse's harder, looking man. a lot of stuff though, man. There's a lot of I mean, like a lot of tech stuff and a lot of travel stuff. What's Snoop Drive certificate? Yeah, what is Snoop Drive? Snoop? Hang on, that's cool. Auto, auto protect protection products. Okay, okay. Fifty percent off of dealership pricing on auto warranties and auto. Oh, there you like, go again. There you go, NAR members. I mean, you know, There's, they should talk more about this stuff. Maybe we need to become the official podcast for NAR. <laughs> Bro, I don't know if they'd have us with this want, much. Uh, I don't know if we want that right now. It so seems like they hire anyone, so <laughs> yeah. we should be fine. <laughs> are, are we are you available for for extortion what oh, definitely <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you just tell them to release it well i dude i i i don't want to test the waters on <laughs> the internet i don't want the, the internet to go, go try I don't know how i do in this situation yeah i'm, I'm I, very I, obstinate though but i don't i don't know if i have anything that i, I don't think i have anything that's too bad but i don't want to like i don't want anybody to go try there's find. certainly nothing i'd quit my job over yeah yeah no there's nothing that would matter like, first off, I, mean, I don't really affect anybody, right? Yeah. Like, it's like, like, yeah, I'm not you know big I mean? enough. I'm just going to shoot my own world. Do you just become that politician? Who was that guy in New Jersey? Was it New Jersey? The Republican? Chris who, Christie? No, who ran <laughs> and won, but he lied about everything. Oh, now, it's the, oh, uh, the uh, senator. The Sen congressman. Yeah, um, and like his whole life was a lie. Just do lying congressman fake life. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> that's, like, his whole life is fake. And everybody knows it. And that's he's still so in good. Congress. I think he's been Is kicked he, out. Now. He's the guy that just got kicked out, right? Yeah, did he, he? Just, he did just get kicked out. But it took him long enough. Like that dude was. He, he had an he entirely care. fake life. Yeah. Like, did you know what we're talking I about? No, oh I my gosh, read some of this stuff. I'll have it's to check it out after this. Crazy. I think it's like New Jersey. George Santos. Santos. Yeah, George Santos. Yes. Like he he like made up his entire life story and got elected, and people found out. And he like didn't care. No, he didn't care. And he's like, yeah, some of it's made up. I, mean, I think it's just one of those things where you go so far down the rabbit hole. What are you? I mean, like he did not graduate much. from the college. He said he did not work for Goldman Sachs or Citigroup. There's no records of, of him being a successful financier. He was never registered with the animal rescue charity. He said he supported. The like, best part is December 26th. Santos admitted to putting a little bit of fluff on his resume. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like there's so okay. Claims to be of Jewish heritage, which he's not. Uh, and then like. Like he's he lied about his religion, like every, like literally, like the most important stuff you'd lie about to get elected. That your is background, like, your religious affiliation. That's some like nineteen eighties lying. That's pre-internet. Yeah. It is, which lying. is bananas yeah. that he actually got elected. Yeah, that's how little people put into voting at a congressional level. That's they don't true. care. Unfortunately, the truth. Like, and it took forever to get him out. I mean, it time. it took. 
Yeah, like the time. picture with you guys can now see the picture of this article. The fact this guy's a liar, and then like the picture they put with it is so hilarious. Yeah, the picture looks like a dope who lies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's only thirty four too. He's the hilarious. young guy too yeah. for Congress. Yeah, that, that is hysterical. Yeah, he's coming back. That's how easy it is. Do you ever see? I know this is like a sidebar, but uh, do you ever see that episode of Black Mirror with the blackmail mm-hmm. where the president? uh has to do a bunch of really horrible embarrassing things mm-hmm. oh you check that one out i think that's the first episode it, of black mirror that ever was, that show was hard to watch in terms it's, of like because some of it feels like it's coming true it's yeah now that it's about eight or nine years old yep there's uh the one with like the social credit score that's pretty not far off have you seen the one the one with the robot ai dogs yeah where um and and there's that one okay so i remember that one and then the one where um the soldiers think that they're seeing a different type of enemy than they really are and they're actually killing like res- refugees mm-hmm. is pretty terrible that shows kind of poetic for how dark it is yep. dude it's i've never seen this crazy show. yeah oh you definitely check Netflix. out black bear you guys yep. would love it it's Man. It's pretty harrowing. Yeah. What show. um as we as we kind of wrap up this one, you know, first show back, um, what do you believe? You know, and this is gonna. I don't. I don't want to date all of our shows in terms of, you know, the year because if people are listening to this, but um, you know, next year, you know, going through all two hundred and eleven of these, um, what do you feel about this year? Because, you know, on our team meeting yesterday, or yeah, yesterday. You know, we've got a lot of positive energy right now, right? We feel rates are headed into a more positive direction. I'm definitely, I'm definitely scared about inventory levels because inventories have drastically dropped again. And then, then we're almost back in square one. And so, you know, David, David, you know, brought up a good point about hearing about recessionary talks. And then I'm starting to see a lot of 70s, you know, uh, JP Morgan CEO came out um, yesterday and said, uh, or on Monday and said that how this reminds him of all the seventies where we were in that high inflation, um, kind of that stagflation type market. You think um, so? That's what he was saying. Hmm. So I'm, I, I'm not thinking it right now. I'm just kind of hearing what, you know, a, a, a leader of a huge banking institution sure. is, is talking about. I think Jamie Dimon is one of the most uh, insightful people on wall street for sure so i definitely listen to him when he talks um i mean dude the market's always gonna be good when people are having fun and showing up and kick a butt sure it is amazing how people show up differently when they think they'll have different outcomes yeah which is so funny because if you show up you should have those outcomes and if you work hard you should have those outcomes. you had some people on your team that had their best year ever in 2023 yeah um which is which is crazy so i i think from a market standpoint it is important to to think about you know like we talk about inflation and rates and things like that there is a little concern of as rates dip the general public it has a short-term memory so is there going to be a buying frenzy if rates come back down and will that drive asset prices even higher and then what does that do to affordability like those factors are there i don't want to see the rest of america become like the coast where nobody can afford to buy anything and that is quickly happening in a lot of areas of our society so i think that going through these kind of micro recessions and these these micro evolutions of the economy might not be great long term for housing affordability also like there are people out there that can solve that problem if you can solve the problem of housing affordability that is like the number one problem to solve in america and i think that the uh, the office space not the movie, but the office sector uh, could be an interesting way to solve the affordable housing crisis going forward, especially in, in, in more dense metropolitan areas. I did. I did hear was it a news report or maybe someone sent it on Instagram, um, which could be all the same now <laughs> um, that someone, some developer turned an old baseball stadium into condos. Jesse, can you look that up? Because I'm like, I mean, if we start looking at at you know where the opportunities are, you're right. We can solve a lot of it. We're we're looking at a project that that this apartment um, owner is wanting to turn it into affordable condos. Yep. Yep. Right. And so, That's um, uh, yeah, cool. this is an abandoned baseball stadium that you can now live in as apartment complex. That's tight. That's pretty cool. Right. 
I saw right when we flipped over a what I believe to be probably a really good question pop yeah. up, and I wanted to get to that because I only read the first line of it. But I, I, I think, I think this is so. Jesse, when you pop that up there, I know it's a big one. <clears throat> I think this is something that regular, like average people, just don't always understand why this is the way that yeah. is. That's a very good case too, yeah. and that is the the flip side to that argument is. What well, read the question? Yeah, what, read yeah so you know, you know, wouldn't lo wouldn't lower rates help inventory grow? Because sellers that didn't want to trade their three and four percent rates for an eight percent rate would be more open to trading it for a five or a five and a half percent rate, um, especially when they can buy down another point, you know, with all the equity that they have, and that that makes perfect sense. There is the uh, shadow inventory is not right the right word, but the unrealized inventory that isn't there right now that might be there if rates come down, and potentially that offsets you know, a, a crazy spike in asset prices, but it that is yet to be seen, but yeah. that is definitely a good argument. So it's, uh, and I, it, they're not wrong. It would have to happen fast enough to satisfy yeah. demand. And that's the problem is that's a lagging indicator. Exactly. And so it's not going to happen fast enough to where by the time they realize it, you're already in so many multiple offer situations again. Um, you know, I saw, I saw a person post on Monday about how they made an offer on a property. They were, they went 16,000 over and they were third. Mm -hmm. They didn't even win it, right? I mean, if you see some of the listings that we have put up, the amount of showings that we're getting is through the roof again. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, yes, you're correct. If it stays, whoever that Facebook user comment uh, made that asked that question and made that statement is like they're not wrong. And but that's that is if it's that is you have to have enough time to let it play out. Yeah. But that short window of maybe this year could be all right. You know, we're we're at locally pre-owned. We're at two point seven to three months of inventory. I think it's two point seven of of pre-owned single family inventory. You can't get you really can't get enough on the market in that spring and summer to satisfy the demand that's really there. If rates hit that five percent mark, yeah. and then even offering a um, you know a buy down strategy, um, and then if they need to sell and buy. They're going to lose the contingency offer, so now they're going to need to go in and, you know, do the bridge loan yeah. um, product. And now they're buying something, and then hopefully by the time they get their home on the market, the market's still strong enough to satisfy getting the price they wanted. So there's, I just see a lot of there's a lot of choppy waters mm -hmm. that, and and I'm not using that to scare anybody. I just look if you're going to go if you're going to go swim in the ocean and there's a there's a there's a stronger undertow you're going to be a little bit more cautious um than when there's not and right now there's there's a pretty strong undertow that you know could sweep somebody out and and what i i never want to do is put a a client in a situation of hurting them financially mm -hmm. right because that i mean i don't know how i could live with myself on that i mean you advise them to do that and then it all of a sudden turns because we didn't we didn't try to look at every every angle possible and then all of a sudden they're now going to make two housing payments that they really couldn't afford in the first mm -hmm. place and now they're in a desperate situation they blame you for having to, to fire sale one property just to unload it i i don't disagree with you at all you know those are those are some of the calculated risks you have to take when you're dealing with you know larger financial assets uh, for sure yeah i think that the other thing to consider what well, this wouldn't this wouldn't be you know, relevant to somebody trading assets, but more so people looking to get into the market, buying yeah. a home and they're renting right now. Um, you know, I would always continue to say, don't wait because yeah, as no, asset no prices no. climb, yeah. rents grow. By the way, prices didn't really fall. Yeah. They actually went up. Now, if you look at seller concessions, if you really look at seller concessions, you know, in, in North Texas, the average seller is coming off 6%. So we'd have to kind of weigh that out. But I mean, technically prices came up. Um, Jesse, if you want to throw this up, this is a long one, you know, the same person, maybe realtors should start talking about it now and educating their people. So they'll be ready for the lower rates and it won't be a lagging indicator anymore. I had people at the house the other night that thought we were still at 8% interest rates. Maybe we need to socialize this more so that they won't be waiting around, uh, before the very day consumer realizes these things. And, and again, you're not wrong on any of these. We, Those by are the way, all, we, we agree yeah, on that. Th it these is. are all logical points. Yeah. The problem is we've been screaming this for so long is that, that, you know, we are looked at as the same level as a used car salesman, mm -hmm. right? So when you start having these conversations, and and look, we're having it now, yeah. right? This is a part of it, and and this is something even on our on our sales meetings. This is something we talk about, and and 
you know, Matt, Matt can attest to this is like one of my conversations on with my sales organization yesterday. I was like, Hey, everyone needs to go on loom L O O M.com. You can, it's free for, for up to five minutes of recordings. I would go record five minutes and break them down into segments for sellers and buyers, five minute segments. So that in explaining what the real estate trends and inventory is doing so that when you finish a conversation with a potential seller and buyer, you can send that to them so they actually can see the data points. Because again, you're not wrong. Yeah. You, you are not wrong at all. But consumers are not 100% there to believe us. And by the time they hear it, and by the time they're ready to believe it, they're already three to six months behind. Yeah, that social proof That social proof keeps the lagging indicator in place. Because yeah. there are just going to be, and I'm one of these people, I'm slow to move. I want to make sure it's going and it's good, and then I'll get in, right? Like, And that's with everything. And I think that some of that is just how people are. We're too busy making TikToks that say, Buy the house, day three. Yes. Yes. Or whatever it is. I was going to say something really. Actually, this would cancel the show, so I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do something with the, the NAR president. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We want to make it to 212. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to be the reason why we're canceled. No. No. Yeah. Let's really? just let the general lack of talent on the show be the reason why we're canceled. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen either, man. So we got this far. In. Yeah. That's fair. I yeah. mean, we own this. They can't cancel this. You know what we haven't done today? Sponsors. I knew that. We were right past him. I was, yeah. I didn't. We're a little rusty. No, uh, little ring rust. No, we look. We started out hot, and I look. It wasn't time to interrupt with ads. That's and, right. and now is that time. Now is the time. You know, and and if you listen to that amazing about to start show intro with that awesome tune, that was because of Tour Studios. Just go to tourstudios.com. Again, you know the the our friend here who was saying, hey, we need to reach out and educate consumers. Uh, about what's going on. You're not wrong. And the best way to do it is using tourstudios.com. Jesse Showalter, the producer, he can help make great content just like this, right? Make videos that you can send out to your database. You can have a podcast just like this so that you can interview local celebrity talent, those business owners, and, and Grilla Marketing. That's Grilla Marketing, right? So where you're using those business owners' network to really help you and help them. And so Jesse can do that for you here at tourstudios.com. Just reach out to him um, and, and schedule a demo and an interview, and he'll be happy to show you what he can do for you. And then, of course, um, because rates are getting lower, guys. I don't know if you've heard that. Rates are getting lower. Coming down. Yep, they're coming down, and it's time to either look at refinancing or get that buyer pre pre-approved. And if you're, in North, if you're in the Texas or Oklahoma area, you just got to get with Mortgage Mike. He's giving those Mortgage Mike stamp of approvals all day. All day can't even play call of duty anymore because he's just got that stamp out and he's just stamping everyone they're like hi he's like stamp approved right we have to tell him in public mike put that stamp away yeah he's like you can't be showing that stamp to everyone like that's you know they don't need to see that right now so you just need to go to mmgloans.com mortgage mike ask him for that mortgage mike stamp of approval just ask him to, sh to show it to you uh he'll get you set up and then um i think this is the year to buy rental properties yes it is right and then if you're doing that you need to leverage your time out, Brian. Yes, Matt, you do. Jesse. So you've got to call Dana Wynn at Homeward DFW. Just go to homewarddfw.com, the best property management company in Dallas, Fort Worth. And um, I think that's, is that everyone? I guess everybody. No, we got Armadillo. Oh, yeah. He was on here with his beautiful oh, beard earlier. Yeah. He was Facebook you know, user. I got to check. He's Facebook user. Oh, you got to see if the money got deposited. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Theron Smith over at Armadillo Home Warranty, armadillo.1 um, forward slash tour, T O R E. He just took care of one of my first time home buyers, just bought a house. He's 27, 28 years old. Got him set up with Theron. Theron did a call with them. He was like, Yeah, I want to go with Armadillo. So, uh, Theron, thank you, sir. And um, did you know his mother in law does is a, is a big time house organizi organizer? I did not know that. Yeah. So, the last show that we did of 2023, I come home. I've got a whole nother story about coming home and something being there that wasn't supposed to be there. And I don't know if I'm going to bring that up on the show or not. Whoa. Yeah. It is definitely. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's yeah. not as racy as it sounds. Or is it? <laughs> or is it? Could be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tune right. in next week to find out what was at my house that wasn't supposed to be there. Um, but I came home after our very end of the show. And uh, Merry Christmas. Ferens Smith's mother-in-law was at my house just hanging out. You said that. That's right. That's it sounded familiar that she was yeah, a designer. She was okay. there to organize our house. And she did, so, a job? She did a great job. Um what's her company? We'll shout her out. I don't know. 
I'm going to need to ask Heather because Theron's mom's closets. Yes. Mother in law. <laughs> mother in law. Theron, Theron, Theron Smith's mother in law's closet organizational. Dot com. Yes. Dot yeah. Com. Just go to armadillo.one forward slash T T O R E. Just connect with Theron. He'll hook you up with his mother in law. Um, <laughs> and uh, you buy a house and he'll probably throw a home warranty in and a free organizational. There you go. Uh, consultation. <laughs> it's going to come on the roost one day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. It's good to be back. It's good yeah, to man. be back. All right. Back to real estate, boys. Yep. All yeah. right. Unlike NAR, it's New Year, New Us. It is New Year, New Us. Yeah. People, so, are, uh, moving. People are moving out there. They are. All right. Go do real estate things. Bye.